it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. Welcome back to our crochet along. We are in the midst of the Summer of Dishcloths cowl on Fiberflux. Now, if you've missed any of what we've been doing so far, I'll put the links down below. We made a dishcloth last week, and this is this week's. Now, every week in the month of July and August, we're going to have a brand new dishcloth pattern. This is today's dishcloth pattern, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet the color block corner to corner dishcloth. This is the corner to corner, which is super popular. And I have done half in one color and half in another. And I have a little palette here of three colors. So I've repeated the colors to make a set of three. Now, that being said, you could make yours all one color. You could do like a thick stripe of one color down the middle. Um, I'm also gonna show you how to do this nice little hanging loop. This is nice if you um, are using your washcloth or dishcloth and you're ready for it to dry. Um, we are gonna be using Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie, which we've been using for all of our dishcloths so far. And I also have an intro video which really explains the whole crochet along, the supplies and everything. We're gonna get into the supplies for these particular dishcloths in just a moment. Now, the finished dishcloths measure about 9 inches by 9 inches. Now that can vary a little bit depending on your tension. Uh, I know some of you are using um, some other yarns for this and if you change the hook size for example. But um, in general they're about 9 inches by 9 inches and I have three colors here. Now you could do two colors, you could do whatever you like. This is a really fun pattern to play around with color. So let's jump right in and get started on our dishcloths. For this project you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, we're going to be using a 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook. Now if you joined us for some of our other dishcloths that we've been doing so far for our crochet along, you'll uh, recognize that we're using the eye crochet hook for all of our projects. And a ruler or tape measure is super handy to have while we're making all these dishcloths so you can kind of get the size that you need. And then the yarn we're going to be using today is called Scrubby Smoothie. Now it comes in tons of colors. You can use any colors you like really. Each ball this is 153 yards. And today's colors that I'll be using are Aqua, Blueberry, and Coral. Now you'll need at least two colors because it's going to be a color block. Um, now really you could just make them all in one color, but uh, because we're doing a color block effect, I'm going to show you how to switch colors and everything like that. Um, we're going to be using these colors. I went for three colors because I wanted to make a set of three. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to begin by putting a slip knot on our hook. We're going to start at the bottom point as if you turn your square and made it like a diamond shape. So we're going to start at the bottom point and work upward and outward and come back in to finish off the square. And then at the end I'm going to show you how to do a hanging loop if you like as well. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. Okay, so what we need to do first is chain six. To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then what we're going to do is in the fourth chain from the hook. So this loop here does not count. We're going to go one, two, three, and four. We're going to work a double crochet. To make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into that fourth chain from the hook, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the next two loops. Okay, work a double crochet into the next chain. Work a double crochet into the next chain, which is also the last chain, the first chain you made when you did your chain six. Okay, so this is the first little block of our corner to corner dishcloth. Now, what we want to do is once again chain six. So, this is considered row one of our corner to corner. Now, we're going to begin row two and we're going to chain six once again. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we're going to work a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So once again, this loop here does not count. So go one, two, three, and four. Work that double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. One, 
and two double crochet and three double crochet, okay? So we worked it in each of those next two chains as well. Now, you might have to flip yours over a bit. Uh, we're gonna connect it to the first block that we made, okay? So we made a block and then we made another block. What I like to do to kind of help me a little bit is that tail that we left, if you need to turn it, make sure that tail is pointing straight at you while you're working, okay? Now we're going to go into the turning chain space. So see now how our double crochets are laying on their side almost like a ladder? When we did that double, uh, that turning chain, it created a space. It almost looks like a box with a little handle or a little tiny purse, okay? So go right into that turning chain space and we're gonna work a slip stitch. So insert the hook into that turning chain space, that space created by the turning chains, and we're gonna bring up a loop You'll have two loops on your hook. Bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. Now, as a personal preference, some people can go into that topmost double crochet there on its side. You can uh, do your slip stitch there too. It's a personal preference. I've seen both. You might want to, if you've never done this before, try both and see uh, what you think about how they look. Okay? Then we're going to chain three. One, two, three, and that, that tail is still pointing towards you. That, that's kind of how uh, my little tip, so I know how to have it configured properly so it's not twisted or moved around. Because you do have to kind of flip it when you connect them the first time. Okay, so once again in that turning chain space we're gonna work three double crochet. One, let me get some more yarn here, two, and three, just like that. So this is the end of row two, and it looks like a little heart at this point. Again, our tail is facing towards us. All right, let's move on to row three. You're gonna to start to see some repetition after this. So we're gonna chain six once again. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and then we're gonna turn it so once again, our tail is facing us. We're gonna go into that fourth chain from the hook. So again, this loop does not count. One, two, three, and four. Work a double crochet in that fourth chain from the hook. So one, work a double crochet in the next chain. If you notice, we're kind of doing the same thing all over again, okay? We're gonna be doing this for the rest of our project. And work a double crochet in that next chain. This is the same thing we did in the previous row. We're just adding more blocks as we go along. Okay, now we need to get that tail facing towards us again. And we're gonna connect our blocks. Remember we did that before? Now you can either go in that double crochet stitch or the turning chain space. It's up to you, whatever you prefer. And then we're gonna chain three. One, two, three. Work a double crochet in that turning chain space, work another one, and another one. So three double crochets in that turning chain space, just like that. We get a little bit more yarn here off of our yarn ball. And then we have to connect it to our next block. So again, you can go in that turning chain space or that double crochet stitch, whatever you prefer. We're gonna chain three. One, two, three, and then work your three double crochets into that turning chain space. So one, two, and three. So row three is complete. So basically, and you can kind of shape it up if you need to, basically we're gonna be repeating row three over and over and over again until your dishcloth is about half the size you want it to be. Okay, so we're gonna keep going with our square. And I have a, an example here. As you work more rows, your square, because we started at the bottom, will start to get wider and taller, and then we're gonna learn how to bring it back in and add a hanging loop last. So what we wanna do is work for a total of nine rows. Now we have one, two, three so far. So I have one here that I've been working on and this one is nine rows. You can tell if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just count the blocks all the way up to one side. 
So what we want to do now, once you've got your um, nine rows, uh, now you can keep going. It's going to be roughly half the size you want the dishcloth to be. So you can keep going. But um, this one is about nine inches by nine inches. So if you want it to be a little bit bigger than that, definitely feel free to keep moving. Um, but what we're going to do at the end of the ninth row, what you want to do is cut the yarn and then just fasten off. Wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. Okay, I'm trying to do my set of dishcloths in each combination of all the colors we're using. So we have the beginnings of an aqua one. We have a coral and an aqua. And this is the um, blueberry. And I'm going to make this one a blueberry and coral. So let me grab this coral color. And I have all kinds of yarn sitting here. So we fastened off. And what we want to do now is start on the decrease portion of our dishcloth. So see where we fastened off here, this little knot? Let me zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. You're going to reinsert the hook back into that stitch. See that? And let's get some of this coral going. I really love this dark blue and this coral together. So pretty. Okay, so let's get the end here of our yarn. And I still, see I still have my hook in there. Hook the new yarn on there. Now there's different ways to join yarn just in general with crochet and there's a couple ways to join yarn with corner to corner. I like to just kind of snip it and tie it right on. Now I wanted to point something out. I'm showing you this way at the end of the row here because I really love, if, if you look at my example, let me zoom back out, if you look at my example you can see this aqua kind of caps off the square very nicely. I really like that looks like a really nice finished look. So we're going to mimic that here. I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's zoom back in on our stitches. Okay, so we're going to reinsert the hook back in there, bring up a loop, and then what we're going to do is chain six to start a new row. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then once again, we're going to turn it. We're just working it the same way just to start. Remember how we have that tail pointing towards us. And then what we're going to do is in the fourth chain from the hook, once again, one, two, three, and four, work your double crochet. Just like that. And we're going to, in the next chain, work a double crochet. Whoops. Wrap yarn around hook. Don't forget that part. <laughs> I know you won't. I definitely did. Okay, and in that last chain that you see there, work your double crochet. Same thing we've been doing all along. We're just switching up the colors to give it that color block effect. Okay, now we're back over here and we need to kind of connect our squares. So go in that turning chain space, join with a slip stitch. Same thing we've been doing. Chain three, one, two, three. Work your three double crochets into that turning chain space. One, two, three. Okay, join with a slip stitch to connect your blocks. And now you can see things are looking pretty familiar. Join with a slip stitch to join those blocks together. Chain three. One, two, three, three double crochet in that turning chain space. One, two, three, join with a slip stitch in the turning chain space. You can see how these colors are starting to interact really beautifully. Chain three, one, two, three, work your three double crochets into the turning chain space. and join with a slip stitch, chain three. One, two, three, work your three double crochet. One, two, three. Now if you like, you can. Uh, there is a feature on YouTube where you can slow-mo the video. You need to slow it down, or you can simply back up and watch row three again if you need a little refresher on this part. So chain three, Work your three double crochet into that turning chain space. One, 
two, three, work into that turning chain space and chain three, three double crochet, one, two, three, grab a little bit more yarn here, join in that turning chain space, we're in the home stretch, three chains, three double crochets, one, two, three, all right, we're getting towards the end here, join with the slip stitch, chain three, one, whoops, two, three, three double crochets, one, two, three, all right, join with the slip stitch, all right, so like I mentioned before, we sort of want to cap off the ends with our color. So we're going to work three double crochets. We're not technically decreasing yet. One, two, because I wanted to get that color right there at the end. So now that we're at the end of this row, we're ready to decrease. So all you want to do is simply turn your work and we're going to work a slip stitch into each of the three double crochets across. So the way the yarn is, it's a little bit funky, but you can just kind of wiggle it in there and work a slip stitch in that first stitch, a slip stitch in the next stitch, and a slip stitch in that last stitch, okay? So it's just going to kind of round off the square a little bit. Then we're going to work a slip stitch in the turning chain space. And then we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And then we're going to work three double crochets into that turning chain space. So one, two, and three. So instead of creating that stair step effect that we've been creating before, we now have a flat edge that will be uh, the side of a square eventually, okay? Next, we're going to slip stitch into, so we're gonna just do what we've been doing from now on for the row, okay? So slip stitch into that turning chain space, chain three, one, whoops, two, three, work your three double crochets into the turning chain space, one, two, three. Join with a slip stitch to connect those blocks together and chain three, one, two, three, work three double crochets into that turning chain space, one, two, three, join with a slip stitch into the turning chain space, and chain three. One, two, three, you get a little bit more yarn here, and work your three double crochets. One, two, three, join with a slip stitch in the turning chain space. So this part should seem pretty familiar, chain three, and work your three double crochets. One, whoops, two, three, join with a slip stitch, chain three, you get a little bit more yarn, my yarn ball is kind of creeping over here. Okay, work three double crochet, one, two, three, we are nearing the home stretch. Join with a slip stitch in the turning chain space and chain three. Work your three double crochets. One, two, three. Join with a slip stitch, chain three. One, two, three. And work your three double crochet. One, two, three, join with a slip stitch into that turning chain space like we've been doing, and chain three. One, two, three. Okay, 
So now at the end of this row, we're going to handle things a tiny bit differently as well. Work three double crochets in that turning chain space. One, two, three, and we also need to have some straight sides uh, for this part of our, this, this side of our square as well, okay? So join in that turning chain space, and then we're just going to simply repeat the row. So once again, we're not going to put another box up here like we've been doing. Simply turn your work, and we're just going to be repeating that decrease, decrease row once again. So all you're going to do is simply slip stitch in each of the three double crochet stitches. One, two, three. This is the same thing we've been doing, but I'm just going to show you a little bit to get you started on the row. And three, okay, chain three. One, two, three. See how we're getting that straight side again? Work your three double crochets in that turning chain space. One, two, three. And then just keep doing what we've been doing. Join in the turning chain space, chain three. Just work across like we've been doing. You can back up the video if you want to see this part again. But you know how we did the three double crochets. One, two, three, and so forth. So just keep repeating that decrease row over and over and over until your square comes back in. Now let's grab our example here. Now see how I made my square? We, let me back up a little bit. There we go. We decreased back inward, okay? So let's switch over to this one because this one is just about done. So I worked, I can pull this out a little bit too. Once you work that very last uh, row, we just have, let me just pull that out a little bit so you can see. Once you work that very last row, you just have one more block to put in there. See how that block's missing? I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, so join with a slip stitch. This is just repeating row three, except for you just have one more block left, okay? So chain three, one, two, three. And then we're gonna put our three double crochets in, okay? One, two, whoops, two, and three. So super easy. Join with a slip stitch into that turning chain space and we have no more blocks to make, okay? We've come up to our point, okay? Now, if you like, you want just a nice square dishcloth, you can leave it as is. Fasten off, weave in the ends, done deal. If you wanna do a hanging loop, stick with me for one more minute. Uh, so we wanna do the hanging loop. Um, well, hang on, if you want to just be done, cut the yarn now, fasten off, be done. For the hanging loop, we're going to hang on to our yarn and turn our work, and then we're going to slip stitch in each of the next three double crochets. So one, two, and three. Okay? Now we're going to chain ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now remember that turning chain space? To the right of it a little, a little bit. Now you can do it in the turning chain space, but to the right is that stitch. So go back down into that stitch, and work a slip stitch, and now you have a cute little hanging loop for your dishcloth. Super easy. You can see that a little bit closer up, okay? So once that's done, now you can cut the yarn and fasten off, okay? So we've done this in different stages with different color combinations. The last thing we need to do is weave in our ends, okay? So grab your tapestry needle, weave your end into the corresponding color of your tail. So we're gonna stick with the coral for this end. We don't want to go into any other colors because it will stick out. OK, 
Okay, so go in one direction with your tail, come back in the other direction with your tail, and snip. Okay, you want to repeat that for all of your ends, and for this this hanging loop, that end here that we had, you'll want to go down into the dishcloth. I wouldn't try going up into the loop with that. It'll kind of stick out too much. So what we want to do is go down into the dishcloth with our tail. Go in one direction. Come back in the other direction with our tail, just like that. And then we can take our scissors and give it a nice little snip. And any other ends you have, just weave those in as well. Okay, so our dishcloth is finished. Now, because I'm making a set and I wanted all the combinations, if you're using three colors like I am, the easiest way to kind of figure out all the combinations that you can do is to start with each color. So for this one, where's that other one we did earlier? Here it is. So for this one, I started with aqua. For this one, I started with coral. For this one, I started with the blueberry. So I'm going to also end on three different colors. So this one, I ended on coral. This one, I ended on aqua. This one, I'll end on blueberry because I haven't done that as a, as a decrease yet. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish all my dishcloths, and then um, we'll see how they all look together. And they, I love these colors together. So... Let's go ahead and finish, if you're making a set like I am, we'll finish all the color combinations and then we'll rejoin and just get a little sneak peek at them. So I'm going to go ahead and finish working on my other dishcloths. Now, the dishcloths appear at the beginning of the video, so if you want to back up and see the beginning where I show all three of them um, and how they look, you know, back up and look at those. But that so that is how you crochet the color block corner to corner dishcloth. This was a really fun project and I can't wait to see all the colors and the color block combinations that you choose. Also, when you're making these projects, be sure to use the hashtag FiberFluxCal and I'll put that above. And you can um, use that hashtag so we can all see all the beautiful work everybody's doing. And if you haven't joined our Ravelry group, um, I will put the link down below for that. That is a place where you can ask questions, you can show off your work, all the different things that you're doing. We have some year-long cows that we're doing as well. So check out everything in that group. That's a really active, fun group. And it's a great group of makers. And there's a lot of helping and question answering. So it's a really great space when you're working on these cows to go hang out in. So this is the second dishcloth in our lineup and I can't wait to show you the rest of them. I gave a little sneak peek at the beginning of the cow, but we really have some fun dishcloths planned and this is a great project. It's very portable for the summer months and you can kind of tuck these away for gifts to give throughout the year as well. So if you join us for all the dishcloths, you'll have a whole giant stash of dishcloths that you can use in your kitchen. You can use uh, to tuck away, like I said, for gifts as well. That's a fun and beautiful little gift to give someone. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest FiberFlux video updates. Thanks again.